Okay. So I'm just going to dig into it right now with the do now. Can everybody see the screen now? Good. So to classify this reaction, what we see going on here is we've got two aqueous solutions. Those are our reactants. As products, we've got something that's insoluble and we've got a new aqueous solution. Anytime you mix two aqueous solutions and you get something insoluble plus a new aqueous solution, that's a double replacement. If we track where the positive ions are, you can see that the potassium started with the sulfate and ended up with the hydroxide. The barium started with the hydroxide and ended up with the sulfate. And barium sulfate is insoluble. To balance the equation and write the chemical equation in words, I'm going to switch to a new slide that will give me a little bit more room. So before we can actually start balancing, you always need to take stock of where you are. And to do that, I make a little chart. Now I see the SO4 and the OH on both sides. That means that I can keep my ions, my polyatomic ions, together. Then it's just a matter of counting up what I have on both sides. So as we can see, we're not balanced. We're not that lucky. We've got a potassium disappearing and a hydroxide disappearing. We can't have that. Let's start with the hydroxide. Our lowest common denominator is going to be 2, which means we put a 2 in front of where we see hydroxide on the product side. Then we take a lay of the land and see what needs to be done. We didn't change anything on the reactant side. We did change something on the product side, however. So the barium sulfate, we've still got one of each, barium and the sulfate. But now we've got 2 times 1 equals 2 potassiums and the same for the hydroxides. Now we're completely balanced. Our coefficients here are 1, 1, 1, and 2. For those of you who are able to do the do now, how did, how did that go? Did we get it? Were we almost there? If you didn't get a chance to do it because you logged on a little late, you saw a black screen do you feel like that's something you could have done if you had enough time talk to me about how balancing went
Okay. So I'll post some more practice with balancing equations. I need to write myself a note because sometimes my brain just does not does not compute. All right. Now writing the chemical equation in words. We've got to name everything, make sure that we use all of our states of matter, and link it together with some kind of phrase that says, you know, that we're mixing a couple of things and making some products. So here's an example of what I would write. Aqueous solutions of potassium sulfate and barium hydroxide are mixed to give solid barium sulfate and aqueous potassium hydroxide. Something like that. Have to mention that, you know, which solutions are aqueous. Mention the solid. And say that they're combined to give or produce or something in that nature. So how are we with writing the chemical equations in words? I'll make sure there's some more practice. Okay, so unfortunately we have to move on to chapter 8, but I'll keep it in mind that we need some more practice with chapter 7. So we'll work that in next week as well. So you had a lot going on last weekend. You had an exam from me, and you had chapter 7, Mastering Chemistry Homework. So I figured... Between those two things, no one's really going to have time to watch a video. I'll make it. I'll post it. But I'm not going to be too concerned about you watching it before we have lecture. We're getting to that point of the semester where it's kind of crunch time. So I know you're going to have less time to prepare. Doesn't mean don't try. But it means that during this part of the semester, I try to work with you a little bit. We're starting chapter eight, which is on the mole concept. It is going to be math intensive. If chapter two didn't go so well for you in terms of the metric conversions, this, this isn't metric conversions, but we are doing conversions of a sort. And we're gonna be doing some you know, building our problem solving skills in this chapter in order for us to check, uh, tackle chapter nine, which is stoichiometry. So if you are in need of extra math help, get that help. If you're in need of a tutor, get a tutor. Don't wait until after exam four. Do it now. Do it today. So we're going to start by talking about what a mole is. 
The mole is a unit of measure for an amount of a chemical substance. What it means is that you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. This number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23, that's Avogadro's number. He was a physicist. He did work with gases and stuff. And one of the things that he determined was how many particles are in 12.01 grams of carbon. That just happens to be what we now call the mole. You can think about the mole as like a dozen. If I tell you I have a dozen eggs, you know that means 12 eggs. If I tell you I have a dozen cookies or brownies, you know I have 12 of those. That's what the mole is to the chemist. If I tell you I have a mole, then that means I've got 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. There are a couple of other ways that we can describe a mole that we're going to get into later on. But this is the first way. One mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd units. Those units could be atoms. It could be ions. Could be molecules. Either way, 6.02 times 10 to the 23, that means one mole. You will need to know this number. It's not going to be on the equation sheet for this upcoming exam or for the final. You need to know Avogadro's number. How do we use Avogadro's number though? I'll show you. For the rest of our time, we're going to be doing problems. I'm gonna identify what problem type we're solving. And at the end, we're going to put together kind of a problem solving cheat sheet so that you can kind of identify the problem and then look at your cheat sheet to know, oh, okay, this is how I solve this. I need to use this unit factor here or this unit equation and this unit factor. So that's the goal here. I'm going to pretend like there isn't a title that tells you what type of problem that you have because when you're doing your homework or the exam, it's not going to tell you. So we'll work on how to identify the problem type just by reading and how to set up what you're given and what you need to figure out. So we'll start with a simple question. How many magnesium atoms are in 1.59 moles of magnesium? I'm immediately drawn to the number, 1.59 moles of magnesium. I also see something about magnesium atoms, but I don't see a number associated with it. Whenever you have a problem and you have a number with a unit and then just a unit. The number with the unit is what you're given. That's the given information that's supposed to help you solve for whatever's being asked for. The other unit that you see without a number, magnesium atoms in this case, that's what we're figuring out. So on our given side versus our need side, we've got moles on one side, which is abbreviated MOL, and atoms on the other. So that's our first problem type, moles to atoms. When you're solving this problem type, you need to use Avogadro's number.
and throughout the rest of this live session, whenever we use Avogadro's number, I'm going to try to remember to put it in red. If you have access to color pencils or markers or highlighters or anything like that, that would be helpful um, because you can kind of color code along with me. So we said we need to use Avogadro's number, but what does that mean? We need some kind of a unit equation. Well, that's what we were given on the other page. This is our unit equation. We're defining a mole as 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. From there, we need to write unit factors. The unit factors look like fractions. Once you have one, you can just write the reciprocal. Now we get to set up the problem. We're starting with 1.59 moles of magnesium. We need to convert moles to atoms. It means we got to get rid of moles. Moles are in the numerator. In order to cancel out the unit, I need to have one in the numerator and the denominator. So my unit factor has to have moles in the denominator. I cancel out the moles because I've got one in the top and one in the bottom. And I'm left with atoms, which is what I want. In the calculator, you're going to put in 1.59 times, and then you may need to use parentheses here, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. When you do that, and you use sig figs, we've got three significant figures here. You should get 9.57 times 10 to the 23rd magnesium atoms. Don't forget your units. Units matter. This is the first calculation type that you're going to need to know for Chapter 8. I've got another example to go through with you, and then I have one for you to try. So let me know if you want me to go through another one, or if you feel like you're ready to try one on your own. Okay, I kind of figured we might want to do a couple of examples together. You're going to hear me sipping tea probably, or at least you might be like, why is she pausing for so long? 
My throat is on struggle. My allergies were like, hey, remember that time it was like 70 something degrees? Pollen. We back. We out here. And my throat was like, okay. Weak willed, easily influenced. So, not 100% on my A game, but we're here. Praise him. It will make it. But if I pause, it's for tea. Because I'm, I'm struggle bus. Full, I am driving the struggle bus this morning. Okay. But I can still do some math. Still do some chemistry. That's what we're going to do. Get my highlighter back. How many moles of tin are in 1.25 times 10 to the 21 atoms of tin? And you have to express your answer in scientific notation. Immediately, I'm drawn to the number. That's what I'm given. And while I'm at it, I should figure out how many significant figures I have. I'm looking here, 1.25. That's three significant figures. What do I need to figure out? How many moles? Well, there I go. Moles of 10. That's my question. That's what I need. There's my given. This is what I need. That makes this atoms to moles. It's still in the same problem category. We have to use Avogadro's number. Last time we went from moles to atoms. This time we're going from atoms to moles. Still use Avogadro's number, but the unit factor we use isn't going to be exactly the same. I'll still write everything out. We know that one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms that's our unit equation we still have the same unit factors And now we're ready to set up the problem. This time we're starting with atoms and we're trying to get to moles. We need to cancel out atoms which means we need to have atoms in the denominator. So we're starting with atoms because that's what we were given. And the question is asking for how many moles. 
So we're starting with it because that's what the question is giving us. When you're putting this into your calculator, you're going to have two numbers in scientific notation. You're going to take the 1.25 times 10 to the 21 divided by Avogadro's number, the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. You're going to get a number and it's going to have moles as your unit. that has three sig figs, but the question asks for scientific notation. So if I put this answer, it would be wrong. With scientific notation, I need to move my decimal point after the two so I can make a coefficient that is at least 1 and less than 10. For my power of 10, I need to account for how many spaces I move the decimal and whether or not it should be a negative or positive power of 10. When we have a negative power of 10, it means that the number you're starting with is smaller than 1. And that's what we have here. So our power of 10 is going to be negative, and we move the decimal point 1, 2, 3 spaces. So our actual final answer is 2.08 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of 10. So I threw in the scientific notation there. Just as a refresher, if you don't fully remember how to write scientific notation, go back and revisit that because it will pop up again in this chapter and all the remaining chapters. Questions here? Then I want you guys to try it. What we can do for this one so that you can kind of get into the swing of things is I'll ask you some questions and we'll kind of work through it together. If you feel comfortable to go ahead and try it completely on your own, go for it. If not, then hang with me. We'll answer questions and arrive at the answer together. First thing we have to do is read the question. How many iron atoms are in 0.355 moles? Express your answer in scientific notation. So when we're setting this up, we're starting with 0.355 moles of iron. And we're asked about how many iron atoms we have. So this is a moles to atoms problem. What do we use to convert moles to atoms?
Avogadro's number. One mole is equal to, what is his actual number? Yes, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And in this case, we're talking about atoms. Now write out both of our unit factors. I'm setting up the problem now and I want to know which one of these unit factors do I use? A or B? we use B. We've got moles in the numerator from our given information. We want to get rid of those moles. So we have to put moles in the denominator so we can cancel them. That will leave Avogadro's number in the top and the units with that are atoms which is what we want. Put it into your calculator, let me know what you get. And don't forget, you need to use scientific notation. So I'll talk through that again. Your calculator is going to give you something like 2.137 times 10 to the 23rd. We need 3 sig figs, so that's 2.14 times 10 to the 23rd. And you can't forget those units. So how do we feel about that? Okay. Good. Let's keep going. Second thing that we're going to cover is molar mass. This is another way to express what a mole is. The atomic mass of any substance expressed in grams is the molar mass of that substance. So if we were looking at carbon on the periodic table, it's got that whole number above it, which is the atomic number, and that tells you how many protons you have. Below it is a decimal number and that's the atomic mass. It's measured in atomic mass units. If you take that 12.01 and instead express that as grams, you could say one mole of carbon is equal to 12.01 grams of carbon. This is the unit equation for molar mass. And what we can write is 12.01 grams of carbon for every one mole of carbon. 
and the reciprocal. One mole of carbon is the same as 12.01 grams of carbon. If you happen to have a compound that has more than one element in it, you just sum up all of the elements and that will be your molar mass. So let's try that together. Is everybody good on this slide? Can I move on? So we have to figure out the molar mass of magnesium sulfate. We'll do the first one together. Then I'll have you do the second one. So if you don't have a periodic table, this is a good time to pull one out. You can look one up on Google, use the one on Blackboard, whatever floats your boat. So we've got magnesium sulfate, which has magnesium, sulfur, and oxygen. You can look up the atomic masses of each of these elements. So that's what you see on the periodic table. With oxygen, you might see 16.00, depending on which periodic table you choose. Some of them only have two decimal places, some have three. Whichever one you use, you'll still end up with approximately the same answer. It's not gonna be different by, you know, 20 or something like that. It'll be very slight. So all of these values are from the periodic table. But we're not done yet. We have to take into account how many of each element we have. How many magnesiums do we have? There's one. Same thing for sulfur, there's one. How many oxygens do we have? There's four of those. So we have to do 24.305 plus, plus 32.066 the 15.999 times 4. And when we total all that up, that will be our molar mass. Give that a shot in your calculator and let me know what you get. I agree. So that's how you calculate molar mass. I'll give you two minutes. I want you to try the second one. Figure out the molar mass of lead to chloride. If you have an answer that you wanna share, you can put it in the chat. I'm gonna write out how I got there. When you look up lead, it's 207.2, and there's only one of them. For chlorine, we've got 35.453, and there are two of them.
So you should get something in the ballpark of 278 grams per mole. So it looks like those of you who put your answer in the chat, we agree. That's how you calculate molar mass. Now we're going to put it to work. We can use it to figure out the mass of some number of moles. So I'll go through a couple of sample questions just like we did before and then we'll walk through one together. What is the mass of 1.33 moles of titanium? Instantly drawn to the number, right? That's our given information, 1.33 moles of titanium. We're asked about the mass. Whenever you see that, think grams. So the question is asking, how many grams? We've got moles on one side and mass on the other. This is our second problem type, moles to mass. And that mass is usually in grams. Can everybody see that color okay? That's the color I think I used in the video. I want to try to be consistent. I think I might use a slightly different color though because it doesn't always show up as well depending on your screen. So we'll do, we'll do green for this one. Whenever you have moles to mass or the reverse taking a mass and going to moles, you want to use molar mass. In this case, we have titanium. So we need to first figure out the molar mass. Then we can write out our unit factor and our, our, our unit equation and our unit factors. Then we can solve. So that's our plan. To figure out the molar mass of titanium, well, it's just an element. So you look at the periodic table. When you look it up, you'll see 47.867. If you put a grams after that, then that's the molar mass. So one mole of titanium is equal to 47.867 grams of titanium.
That's our unit equation. There's one unit factor. And then we write the reciprocal. So we figured out the molar mass of titanium just by looking at the periodic table. Then we wrote our unit equation and the unit factors from that unit equation. Then we set up the problem. Starting with the number of moles we have, we need to choose a unit equation that will give us grams at the end. That means the moles needs to be in the denominator of the unit factor that we need. Are we using A or B? We're using B. That cancels out the moles and it gives us grams. With three sig figs, you should get 63.7 grams of titanium. And that's by multiplying 1.33 times the 47.867. How do we feel about that? Let's walk through another one. How many moles of titanium are in 83.6 grams? Our given information is the one that has a number, 83.6 grams. What we need, well, we know moles, but we don't know how many moles. There's no number with it. So that must be what we're trying to figure out. This is a mass to mole question. It's the reverse of what we just did, but we still have to use molar mass. We use the same molar mass because, well, it's still titanium. And that means that our unit factors are the same too.
I'll label those for you. We've got our unit equation, which the unit equation always has an equal sign, and then the unit factors. Those look like fractions. This time, our starting information is the number of grams of titanium. Which one are we using this time, A or B? With this unit factor, we cancel out grams and we end up with moles. Try it in your calculator. Let me know what you get. Make sure that you're dividing. There we go. Now I've got one more problem that I want you to try. Start with identifying the problem type, which I know might seem a little bit silly since it says it right there in the title, and you know that's what it's going to be. It's going to be one of the two that we just did. But when you're doing your homework or an exam, it's not going to be that explicit. So make sure that you can identify the problem types. Here's your problem. We've got the same number of grams, but now we're working with calcium. I'll give you a couple of minutes to get started, and then I'll check back in. I'm going to start writing some things out. If you're still working, that's fine. So we've got 83.6 grams of calcium. We need to figure out moles. That's a mass to moles problem. So we have to use molar mass. You look up the molar mass of calcium. And that's just by looking at the periodic table. You look at the atomic mass, you write grams after it. And that's the molar mass for calcium. Those are our unit factors. Then we set up the problem. We 
we're still using a the first unit factor and that's because we need to cancel out the grams of calcium and be left with moles with three sig figs you should get 2.09 moles of calcium how do we do All right. So the key with these is again, practice. Identify the problem type. And that that's like most of the battle, knowing what kind of problem you're solving. From there, it's just a little bit of tweaking here and there to get to the answer every time. So we did two calculations, atoms to moles, and we did mass to moles, and they're inverses. So that means we've got two ways to describe a mole. We've got Avogadro's number, which tells us how many atoms or molecules or ions. And then we have molar mass, which tells us the mass, grams. We can actually put these things together and go from number of atoms all the way to number of grams in the reverse. So I'll give you an example of that. We've got 4.55 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. We need to know the mass. So we're taking those carbon atoms and we need to figure out the number of grams of carbon we have. This is atoms to mass. We can't jump straight from atoms to mass. We've got to go through moles. So our plan is to first do atoms to moles. What do we use to go from atoms to moles? Avogadro's number. Then we take those moles and convert it to mass, the number of grams. What do we use to go from moles to mass? Molar mass, that's right.
So those are the two parts of our equation. For atoms to moles, I'm just going to jump to writing our um, unit factors. So that's what we have for the atoms to moles portion. We're going to choose our unit factors from there. Let's set up the second part which is moles to mass. We have to use molar mass here. And this is pretty easy because it's just one element, it's carbon. You look at the periodic table, see what it says, 12.01. You write grams and the symbol for carbon, done. We have all our unit factors, and it's time to set up the problem. Okay, time for you to help me. With our first unit factor, we need to take the number of atoms we have and convert it to moles. Am I using A or B for that? What about the next part where we're taking moles and converting to mass? Am I going to use A or B? We're going to use B. So when you're entering this into the calculator, you take 4.55 times 10 to the 23rd divided by Avogadro's number times 12.01. When you do all of that, first you check your units. We get some moles of carbon than grams of carbon. And when you do the multiplying and dividing,
9.08 grams of carbon. Now, if you feel like you're going to watch this again or you need to go through the notes again, I'd recommend that you also put this into your calculator when you're going back over it to make sure that you get the same thing. One, it double checks me. But two, it makes sure that you can actually use your calculator reliably. That is the source of a lot of sh stress and frustration when you're like, I'm putting it in, I'm putting it in, and I'm not getting the right answer. Check, check with an answer that you know already to be true for the most part and make sure that you can get that. Then just keep doing it the same way. Questions on this? I know we need to do more practice, but are there any questions on this particular problem? No, we can do it in the reverse. So we can have a mass that we start with, and then we have to work it from mass to moles and moles to atoms. Good question. How about we do that? I can't leave you hanging. I got to give you one of each so that you have examples to go from. How many oxygen molecules are present in 2.25 grams of oxygen gas? We've got 2.25 grams and molecules. So this one is a mass to molecules question, which you could think about it as mass to atoms. It's the same thing. It's just that we're talking about a molecule instead of an atom. First thing that we're going to need to do is take our mass and convert it to moles. What do we use to convert mass to moles? I'm going to keep asking the same questions, so just bear with me. We use molar mass. For the second part of the equation, we take those moles and convert to molecules. What do we use for that portion? Avogadro's number. So let's set it up. This is our plan. If I have one mole of oxygen gas, how many grams do I have? Take a minute. You can put it in the chat. What is the molar mass 
of oxygen gas. So oxygen gas, yeah, you need to multiply by two because there are two of them in the molecule. Yep, that's it. So if you used 32 here, wouldn't be any harm. Like I said, some periodic tables say 16.00. And for the exam, you're not going to get points off um, if you do that. You'll get still approximately the same answer. So we know our molar mass, that means that we can write out our unit factors. Time to handle the second part. Moles to molecules. I'll just write out those unit factors. You know what's about to happen. We're going to figure out which unit factors we need to do this. We're starting with our given information of 2.25 grams of oxygen gas. The first unit factor needs to be from the mass to mole section. Am I using A or B? This time, since we're going from mass to moles, we need to have the mass, grams, be in the denominator. So we're going with A. What about going from moles to molecules? Am I using A or B?
We've got it set up. Try it in your calculator and let me know what you get. Alrighty. Here we go. What is the mass of 4.55 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of carbon dioxide? We're given a number of molecules and we need to figure out the mass. So this is an atoms to mass problem. First thing we have to do is go from atoms to moles. We use Avogadro's number for that. So those are the unit factors that we're going to choose from for the first piece of our equation. The second piece of the equation, we're going from moles to mass. For that, we need to calculate the molar mass of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide has one carbon, that's 12.01 grams, and there's two oxygens. I estimated them at 16, a little bit easier on the math. That's 44.01 grams per mole. If you use the 15.999, then you'll just be like a couple of thousandths different not at all a big deal. Those are the unit fact unit factors we need to choose from to make our equation. For the first unit factor, we need to have molecules in the denominator. For 
for the second unit factor, we need to have moles in the denominator. Let's make sure that our units cancel out. So we're canceling out the molecules and ending up with moles. Then we're canceling out the moles and ending up with grams. And that's where we want to be. You take 4.55 times 10 to the 23rd, divide by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, multiply by 44.01, you should get somewhere in the ballpark of 33.3 .3 grams of carbon dioxide. Now for the exam, let's say that you put 33.2. That's still correct in my book. If you put 35 or 30, those are two different. Okay, but 33.2 or even point 0.1, that's okay. So how do we do? So if you weren't close, Usually what happens is you need to figure out which unit factors to use. And if you don't know which type of problem you're doing, whether it's atoms to mass or mass to atoms, then you may choose the wrong set. So likely what you need to practice is reading the problem. But if you're in a position where once you know what the problem is, you can work through and choose the right things, then that's a pretty good place to be. Yeah, so that's okay. Recognizing where your mistakes are, that's how you learn. So I think everyone, if you're going along and you're trying it and you're seeing like, oh, I didn't do this, I didn't do that, that's a great place to be. So this time with this problem, we had molecules. So that means we're starting with molecules and we have to get to moles. Our goal is always to take the given information and if it isn't moles, get there. Does that make more sense? So, one more in this area. I always give this question on the exam. Usually, you will also see it on the final as well. What is the mass of a single molecule of, insert your favorite compound here. Today, it's sodium chloride. Don't be confused by the wording of this problem. It is still going from a mass or going from a from molecules to mass. A single molecule is one. It may look silly to have one molecule, but you can absolutely figure out the mass of a single molecule using the same 
exact method that we've been using. I'll walk it through so that you can see how to do it, but it's the same thing. You're just going to end up with a mass that's really, really small. And that makes sense because one molecule is not a whole lot. So we're going from molecules to mass, which means we have to use Avogadro's number first to get to moles. Then we go from moles to mass. You have to figure out the molar mass of sodium chloride. So you look at the periodic table, you find sodium, it's 22.990. Then you find chlorine. 35.453. You add them together. You have your molar mass. So those are the unit factors for moles to mass. So we're using Avogadro's number. I didn't write out the unit factors. Some people like to just write it all out in the equation without writing it, you know, multiple times. So I'm going to show you how you can do that. We've got molecules in the numerator. That means that we have to have molecules in the denominator. We want to get rid of it. Wherever there's molecules or the particle that you're interested in, that's where you put Avogadro's number. We know that that's the same as saying one mole. So that's what you put on top. I wrote it in green. I knew I was going to mess up one time. Let me write that in red. I'm getting all my colors messed up. Let's try that again. So we've got that unit factor. 
Now we need to go from moles to mass, which is grams. You put the grams on top and the moles on the bottom. When you put that into your calculator, you're going to get something very, very small. So when you see that question about what is the mass of a single molecule, it is a molecules to mass problem. You just have one molecule. Questions here? Make sure you know this problem type because you'll see something exactly like this with a different compound on your exam. The third way that we can define a mole is for gases only. And that's with molar volume. At standard temperature and pressure, which is zero degrees Celsius in one atmosphere, one mole of any gas occupies 22.4 liters. That is called the molar volume. Again, gas is only. That's it. And they have to pee, they have to be at STP, standard temperature and pressure. The problem will say that it's a gas at STP. Chapter 10 deals with gases specifically and we will address more about gases then. We'll also revisit molar volume when we get to chapter 10. So for now you'll need it to do calculations but you don't really need to know anything about gases in particular. All you need to know is one mole of gas has a volume of 22.4 liters at STP. How do we use that? We've got a sample of propane and it occupies 4.50 liters at STP. How many moles of propane are present? First, we need to highlight our valuable information. I see a number here. I see a chemical formula. And a question asking how many moles? Well, I've got a volume and I'm being asked about how many moles. This is a volume to moles problem. For that, we always use molar volume.
one mole of gas. In this case, it's propane. If you have a gas grill, it's very likely propane. At STP, one mole of propane has a volume of 22.4 liters. That's our unit equation. We can write our unit factors There's our unit factors. We set up the problem, starting with our volume, because that's what's given, the volume. Now we need to choose the unit factor that's going to get rid of liters and leave us with moles. That's the first one. We can get rid of the liters. We're left with moles. To enter this into your calculator, you do 4.50 divided by That's our final answer. So it's similar to what we've been doing, but this is specific to gases only. Questions here? We're gonna stop pretty soon. I just wanna get through molar volume. So let's do one more of these and then I have another one for you to try. We've got oxygen gas again and it occupies 6.85 liters at STP. How many moles of oxygen gas are present? We're told what a volume is. We have to figure out the number of moles. This is a volume to moles question, so we have to use molar volume. We 
we already know what it is for gases. Then we set up the problem. We're getting rid of liters. Liters needs to be in the bottom. Try it in your calculator. Let me know what you get. I agree. So we're going to stop there. We're not going to tackle density this time. We have a little bit of time, but I don't want to rush it. We'll have plenty of time next week. So I'm skipping ahead to the end here. We'll finish that up and then finish up chapter 8 next week. You'll have a check-in due this Sunday. I didn't post it yet because I wasn't sure how far we were going to get. But it's going to be one of those like atoms to mass or mass to atoms type question. And then it'll be a molar volume question as well. Chapter 8, Mastering Chemistry, is not due until April 4th. We're taking two weeks on this. We're going to take our time. Make sure you have plenty of practice. I encourage you to look at the homework. Try what you can try that we've already covered. And you can bring those questions with you to class next week. I'm not having office hours this week. I have some campus-related stuff that I need to get done. And I figured this was a good week to do it since we just had an exam. If you need me, you can still send me a course message. And we can communicate that way. Your fourth and final regular exam is going to cover chapters 7 and 8. And that's going to be available Wednesday, April 7th. So that will be your last regular exam. We'll cover chapters 9 and 10, of course, but we're not going to have five exams. That's just cruel. Only four, and then you'll be tested on chapters 9 and 10 on the final, along with looking at the other chapters. If you don't have any questions for me, that's all I have for you, so you're free to go.